How many of you looking at this show now are called obese? You know, obese can come in many terminologies. Sometimes if you gain just a little weight, weight people will say obese, and then if you become a giant, it's really obesity, <laughs> you know, with a T, a ton, weighing a ton. I wrote a musical years ago called OO Obesity, and it's about what obese people go through before they decide they want to gain some health. And, and the opening scene uh, of these four fat people on a stage, two black, uh, uh, two black and the other two uh, Italian and Jewish, <laughs> so it, does, it hits every race. <clears throat> they open with the song called O O Obesity. And it says, O O Obesity, see what you're doing to me. It plagues humanity, but getting fat is fun. O O Obesity, we eat what's on land and sea. To be or not to be a battle that's never won. You think that we are fat. You think we ate all of that? But we know where it's at. Wherever we sit, you know we sat. <laughs> you know? So years ago, we had uh, people who were obese, of course, uh, and they would come to your house and they sit on the couch. You can imagine what kind of imprint they made on a couch. And people would almost say, here, yeah, sit in this chair. <laughs> but in the couch, because the size of your rear would be indented in that couch pillow. But obesity is serious, and serious in America. I mean, it is one of the most serious health problems that we have. You look at all the uh, cancer and all the other things that uh, plague us as such. Obesity really plagues us all the way from children all the way to adults. And of course, diabetes is hooked up to it. Hypertension is hooked up to it. So many other uh, endocrine, what we call glandular diseases, are hooked up with it. And, and the food industry is going crazy. They just keep adding more and more food to the uh, choices. And you go into a store and you have a choice of anything, uh, from uh, a fast hamburger place to a grocery store. You, you see things that are, look attractive. Not only do they taste good, but they look attractive for you to reach out and grab it. Well, we have uh, a, a wonderful person here at Downstate Medical Center who I'll get into a minute, who's a uh, computer expert. Uh, but at the same time, his computer in his body went off and he gained a lot of weight. And uh, weight he'll tell, tell you all about. So I want to welcome you. Don, Don, it's so nice having you with us. Thank you, Dr. Dees. Yes. Don, you know, um, let's start off when you were a, a little boy. With a lot of fat people taking care of you, or were they, were they are kind of a parent, et cetera, uh, you had a clean plate club? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, I was a 60s and 70s kid, and we did have a clean plate club. <laughs> uh, you know, my. Uh, I was raised by my mother and grandmother, right. and uh, they said, there are people starving out there. <laughs> Finish everything, and you'll get extras. <laughs> right, oh boy. And you got extras. Yes. <laughs> but do you remember the kind of food you were eating? Was it attractive from the standpoint of being dessert or sweet, or was it just plain food like uh, a, a chop and mashed potatoes? It was most Everything I from see. chicken to uh, pork chop, I see, right. to spinach, right. uh -huh. to Rice Krispies, right, sure. to uh, Big Macs. I remember there was a show on the thing called Uncle Don <laughs> you know, on the radio at that time too. And Uncle Don, I when I finally saw him, he was kind of fat himself, you know. But he would have all these things. Even even often Annie had a place where you could drink your oval tea. <laughs> And things like that, you know. But everything was good to taste, you know. Uh, were you a sweet eater or a food eater? Yes. Uh, Did both. <laughs> right, right. In, in what, what sense? Uh, whatever they put in front of me, I usually ate. Uh, I was a usual seafood diet. Whenever I see, I see food, I eat it. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, that's how it was, uh, right. you know, for uh, my my uh, growing up period. Now, getting back to your education, now um, you're talking about being a computer computer lover as well as an expert in computer. How did you get into computer? And, and uh, give us a little background on. on your 
teaching? Well, in 1977, uh, they started a computer club in the high school right. when I was a senior. Uh -huh. So I joined. It was an old time-sharing computer where you had to dial in through a modem. I see. Uh, at that point, there was no cable modem, there was no optimum, there was no Fios. Mm -hmm. uh, everything ran slow. Right. And people were limited to the amount of time that they were uh, used to. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I'm not a computer expert by any means, but uh, you must have had a good mind, although you were obese and things like this and all these other health problems, your brain looked like it was functioning 24-7. <laughs> right. That didn't happen until I was in 10th grade, and things just started to snap. Uh -huh. And things came, uh, uh, you know, down originally, and, you know, I was on the uh, dean's list from... Uh, you know, my sophomore year to my senior year until right. I graduated, co you know, graduated high school going into college. Right. Did you remember doing much athletics and playing any kind of thing? I know now you run marathons and things like that, but were you running marathons then or were you doing any athletics? No. In the eighth grade in 1972 and 1973, I was on the track team. I see. I was a shot putter. Okay. Uh, we had an eight-pound shot, and my goal was to throw at least 20 feet. Okay. Did you succeed? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Were you muscular or was it just fat hanging at you? It was just fat. <laughs> I see. Right, right. Were you a fat eater? I mean, you know, a lot of people will take off the skin off chicken or they won't cook in much grease. Was your parents uh, somebody that would, or your mom uh, would cook in oils and things like that? Or? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Right. You know, usually in oils uh -huh. and breaded. Right. How about bread? Would you, how much bread would you eat at a meal? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. When you say a lot, three or four slices? Uh, probably. Yes, right. And so those carbohydrates were really essentially part of your diet? Yes. Uh -huh. Maybe some of the, what's some of the other carbohydrates that attracted you? I loved spinach. Uh, I started eating corn when I was in college. Uh, I liked the sweet uh, taste of Coke uh -huh. and uh, RC Cola right. and first generation of Gatorade right. and other... Uh, Sweet things like that. Right. Well, what, what, so you drink a lot of the sugary drinks? Yes. Uh -huh. How many a day would you say? I would say four or five. Yes. You know, I tell folks who drink four or five, if you look at those soda machines that had like 500 cans in the uh, holding in the machine, that it's almost unbelievable that when you're addicted like that to a certain degree, you eat one of those machines a year. <laughs> And, you know, if, yes. you stood, if you stood there and saw the can after a can fall out and counted 500 cans, <laughs> you know, that's a lot of, st a lot of calories. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, sweets? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Apple pie. Cookies, right. apple pie. Uh, right. Uh, ice cream bars. Yes, uh, right. We had the good humor truck come every day during <laughs> summer. Right, uh, right. You know, being a kid from the 70s, uh -huh. we always... Ran out, got yeah. our uh, our toasted almond <laughs> right. or uh, or our strawberry shortcake. Right. Uh, good humor. Yes. Now, during this period of time, you must have had some uh, medical examinations, or you've been or followed for just having a yearly examination. Did your doctor speak of your diet, or did he see you getting fat himself, or was he fat? Uh, well. <laughs> When I was in 10th grade, right. I broke my, one of my fingers I playing see. basketball. Uh, I went to the doctor. Uh -huh. He taped it up. He looked at the scale and he said, you know, Donald, if you continue on this track, you're either going to have a major heart attack or you're going to die before you're 30. Wow, yes. Had anybody died in the family that you know of? Uh, no. Relative, anything like that? No. What about obesity in itself? Was your mother or father obese or your brothers or sisters? Uh, 
didn't run in my family. Right. Uh, my brother was a little overweight, but not obese. Uh -huh. I was, uh, by the time I uh, bottomed out right. or uh, was at my heaviest, uh -huh. uh, I was at 440 pounds. Oh, wow. And at what age was that? And that was 2009 when I was 49. Wow. Oh boy, that was some weight to carry. I, in fact, I, I have to, uh, an example of some of the things that you were wearing at that particular time. Uh, for example, you can hold one in. This was a, a pair of pants. Size 64. <laughs> 64, yes. And uh, who would make these pants for you? I'd have to go to a big and tall man's shop. I see. And now I take it with me every year to... Uh, the weight loss uh, seminar. I see. To say, uh, I went from this yeah, to now, right. I wear size 44. Right. And wearing honest to Michael Jordan Haynes underwear. <laughs> well, in your getting obese, did you recognize it in the mirror yourself? I mean, you know, sometimes we go to Coney Island and different places and you look in the mirror and they have distorted form. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there that. were times uh, I had to look in the mirror and say, wow, yeah. that's big. Yeah, yeah. And uh, around 2009, right. I decided, you know, let's see what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did go for tests mm -hmm. for uh, weight loss surgery, but it was an open uh open uh, process. I see. Now was this before, before you had the surgery itself, which we'll get into, uh, were you trying to limit your diet on what you were eating, or was it just anything goes? Well, when uh, I was first diagnosed as being obese, the doctor gave me uh, pills, you know, oh. pet pills, amphetamines. I see. And it worked. I was down to 179 pounds, but my heart was going at about two to four times its regular speed. I imagine so. So uh, he said, well, let's forget about that. Mm -hmm. And since, you know, since he took me off, I try every diet, every right. live it, every uh, don't call it diet because diet has a die in front of the T. <laughs> yeah, that's right, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. That was in existence, right. you know, even Weight Watchers and Slim Fast. Right. Now, as far as foods were concerned, did you favor one food over the other, or was it just all foods you ate? It was all foods. Uh, right. So it wasn't like more sweets or more nope. protein or things like that. No, I was an equal opportunity eater. <laughs> right, right. Carbohydrates, as far as um, what would you take as a dessert? Uh, say, would one cookie be enough, two cookies? Uh, a box of cookies, yeah, right, uh, right, a yeah. row of cookies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on yeah. top of that, ice cream. Yes, right. Was it the taste that got you to liking to eat, or was it just a habit? Did you really taste each food that you ate, and you knew which food you wanted the most? As long as it tasted good, uh -huh. it was good for me. And good is interpreted good for me. <laughs> If it tasted nice, if it didn't taste like, yeah, this guy, this came from a hospital, uh, it was good for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, when you mention hospital food, uh, sometimes you look at the trays that people get in the hospitals. It, they have dietitians, of course, and things like this, but it doesn't look too appetizing. I see a lot of plates left on their, on their desk uh, where they eat. No, them. it doesn't. You know. Because when my mother went to the hospital for breast cancer surgery right. and uh, chemotherapy, she said, here, have my, uh, have my orange drink. Uh -huh. Here, have my Jell-O. Right, yes. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O. -L -L -O. Yeah, yes. They, 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 well, you know, it's seemingly like they serve so, certain things in a hospital that it looks appetizing, but it really doesn't even taste that good, but you eat it just because it's there. And, you know, right. Yeah, you know. Now, as far as your feeling about obesity and losing weight now, you started off weighing what now? 
Well, my heaviest, I was 440 pounds. Okay. Uh, when I did go for the surgery, I was first weighed in at 420 pounds. Yes, right. Uh, the day of the surgery, I weighed 370, so I did lose weight, Right. you know, before then. I see. And after the surgery, I've been losing and losing and losing. Uh, almost to the point where I went to my surgeon uh -huh. uh, earlier this month, and he said, so Don, when are you going to gain some weight? <laughs> so right now you're like that? Yes. Rather than this? Yes, I'm about, uh, <laughs> as uh, the surgeon said, half the man that I was before. <laughs> <laughs> Not in personality, though. No. Have you changed? Have you changed in personality much uh, from losing weight? Well, uh, when I went for surgery, as I was walking into the operating room, I was saying to myself, "Dead man walking, uh -huh. dead man walking," right. mm -hmm. and the nurse was saying, "Don't say that. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. Right. They're yes. just going to put you under and you're going to be okay." Right. But. Uh, as the year developed and the year ran around, right. uh, it seems that the old Don had died off and a new Don was born again, right. just like uh, the mythical, mythical Phoenix. I see, right. Do you think it took a certain amount of willpower to do this or somebody to encourage you to do this? Or did you have to have this internal desire? It became an internal desire. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, you know, as I said, ever since I was uh, overweight, mm -hmm. and even before then, right. uh, I was really a little loner. Right. Yeah. So it takes the surgery, and I'm saying, okay, let me get out for a bit. Mm -hmm. So I get out for a walk. I walk one block. I walk two blocks, right. I walk three blocks, yes. until I walk uh, two miles every day from here to President Street, yes, right. and then back home again. Oh, this one. Oh. And in August of t 2013, mm -hmm. I did my first 5K in Harlem, oh, wow. going around uh, Jackie Robinson Park, uh, around uh, Harlem. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing another 5K soon for uh, the American Heart Association, uh -huh. you know, with Team Downstate. Uh, the Cancer Walk Strides Against Breast Cancer. Right. I'm going to be joining Team Downstate oh. two weeks after that. I see. And I entered myself in the uh, 5K race to the finish line on New York City Marathon weekend. I see. And so this is, was a number that you wore at one time. That huh? was the number and the bib that I wore for my first 5K run. Well, well, and well, does that number now have any significance to you other than losing weight? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> just a number that they gave me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it wasn't 440 uh, etched on my chest. Right. It was 40. 49.66. Right, okay. And I finished in uh, 44 minutes, okay. averaging 14 minutes per mile. Okay. Now, during the obesity time that you had, uh, did you have a high blood pressure? High blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, and depression. Well, that's, that's a really a foursome. Yes, <laughs> fearsome foursome. Yes, yeah, right, you gruesome foursome. And now, what has happened to the diabetes? The diabetes, uh, I've only taking, taken insulin twice I see. since the surgery. I see. And I've gone from 80 units of long-acting insulin to 12 units every night. Oh boy, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. As far as uh, high blood pressure goes, I'm now taking one medicine from four medicines. Is that something? Yes. With high cholesterol, I went from two medicines to one medicine, and they halved the dose of that one medicine. And your cholesterol runs like about what? Normal. It's now normal. Isn't that wonderful? And sugar? My sugar is normal to low. 
Oh, that is that one. So I see the uh, endocrinologist again in November. Right. We'll see what happens then. Well, the main thing is with all that you're doing, and this took a lot of encouragement and a lot of willpower, do you feel better? Yes, I, f I, I feel healthier. Mm -hmm. I, as I said, I'm getting out more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm enjoying life. Okay. I'm uh, doing things that I couldn't do. Yes, right. You know, back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and I like it. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Now, you know, there's all organizations like Weight Watchers and Overeaters Anonymous and things like this. Did you try any of those things while you are um, losing the weight? Uh, I tried Weight Watchers for uh -huh. a year. Right. Uh, that didn't work out. Uh -huh. I tried Overeaters Anonymous, but they told me that I was too quiet for them. Oh, I see. Too quiet. <laughs> I see. I have gone to some of those myself, like I said, Alcoholic Anonymous and things right. like this. But it's wonderful that they have these different organizations to encourage you to uh, talk to other people or see other people, because I imagine when you went to those places, you saw some very obese people. Yes. In fact, a, a program I just saw just recently, The Greatest Losers, <laughs> you know, and they really are serious. I don't know, I, I, I haven't watched it from week to week, but every time I watch it, it, it doesn't seem like they're losing a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> Four or five pounds, they might say. But here you came from what pound to what pound? I came from a high of 440 pounds to currently 229. Isn't that something? That is... Half of a man. Yes. Right. You, you should have your own program. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you would tell the audience uh, to encourage them? If they're really overweight, uh, just get in touch with their doctor. Uh -huh. Find a local uh, hospital that, that does bariatric surgery. Right. Stick with the program. Mm -hmm. Get more active. I've been doing exercises as well. I'm doing uh, about 60 minutes of yoga a day, along with the running and the walking. Oh, okay. And uh, regular exercise with that. Yes. Right. So, you know, there is help for you. Yes, yes. When, would you say that um, your taste to, for food has changed any? You know, sometimes uh, people like a lot of salt in their food and things like that, or sugar and things like this. Do you take less sugar or less salt in your diet? Uh, with, the, uh, with the diet, I went from a regular can of uh, ravioli to a little t tin, right. a little uh, personal size of ravioli. Mm -hmm. uh, if I ate the whole can now, I would get sick and uh, it wouldn't feel good for me. Right, yes. Well, after you had the surgery, how long did it take for your body to accommodate uh, less food and things like that? Well, it was less food from the get-go. I see. Uh, there's uh, three steps to the program. Okay. Uh, the first step is liquid diet for the first couple of weeks. I see. Uh, then a pureed diet and baby food. What type of liquids? Uh, protein shakes. I see. Any water in between that? And water. Uh-huh, right. Uh, then baby food for four weeks after that. Mm -hmm. uh, along with protein shakes. I'd have to take protein shakes the first year. Right. And from uh, the second month on, it was a regular diet. So I would limit what I ate. Has this affected your budget much? Uh, not that, really. From your food? Uh, no, I usually get all my stuff in one shot. I see, right. And get going. Is your mom or your grandmother so far living to see you have lost this way? I know that they're smiling from, <laughs> uh, from way up. <laughs> <laughs> way up to, Saying, to way Don, we love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's because you're way down. Yes. <laughs> Don, let me tell you, you're an inspiration for those who are looking at you today, of course. To be and continued. To be continued. And not only that, but... You seem to be uh, satisfied 
uh, emotionally what you've done for yourself and as far as diseases are concerned. You know, everything is dis-ease. When you have dis-ease, do you find that personality has changed any? Uh, yes, my personality has gone 360. That's good. In what sense? Uh, well, when I was overweight, I was really negative and down on myself. And I'm saying, nah, yeah. no, I can't do that. Yeah. To the part where I'm saying, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yes, life is great. <laughs> well, I think that's the best thing to, to end it all, to say life is great. And you certainly have been uh, an example of perseverance and uh, attitude uh, and uh, destiny is on your side too. We hope you will double your, triple your, triple your lifespan. <laughs> I, and I think that's mostly important when you think about it, tripling your lifespan. And so uh, we hope that we'll see you again uh, a little while later and you'll be looking like Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Dees. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Doc, for being with us. And so uh, to you folks out there, it's a chance for you to lose it or abuse it. And if you abuse it, you will have you will lose it. <laughs>